single one of you here today. We greet you in the precious and powerful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on this wonderful Resurrection Sunday. Amen. We give God all the praise today. He's deserving of it all. And I just want to welcome each of you in the warmest way that I can to our in-person worshipers as well as to our virtual audience. God bless you all. Thank you for watching and being a vital part of this worship experience. You're not just watching and spectating, but you're participating and you are very valuable and instrumental to what we do here. So we thank God for you. If you don't mind sharing this worship experience on your device at this time, like, 
Love, amen, on your device at this time. Thank you so much to our Facebook audience. We praise God for your participation. Thank God for you. To our in-person worshipers, if this is your first time, we would love to acknowledge you. If you don't mind standing, we'd love to appreciate you and love on you. Amen. If you've never been here before, we'd love for you to stand at this time. You're considered a special guest. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, we are all family, and that's a blessing. That really is. And we thank God. Amen. 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 Well, actually, let me recant that. We've got a special guest, and she's standing right now. We thank God for you coming on in here. Amen. God bless you. That card that's been handed to you, if you don't mind filling it out and during our giving time, just insert it into the tray. And we thank God for you so much. We're going to sing a wonderful welcome song now. Amen. And those members of our church, if you want to greet our special guest, please do so. Let her know we love her and we appreciate her presence here today. Amen. You are all welcome. Amen. Welcome to St. John. Welcome to St. John. Welcome to St. John, where there's power, purpose, and praise. Hallelujah today. Welcome to St. John. Welcome to St. John. Welcome to St. John, where there's power, purpose, and praise. celebrate our precious Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for being the King of glory. Amen. And so at this time, I'm so, so excited because we have these amazing youth and children that will bless us right now with their Easter presentations. Amen. I want to give a special appreciation to Sister Catherine Columbus and Sister Savon Harrell for giving leadership to them. Would you put your hands together in honor of God as they come before us even now? Amen. Easter, it is a time to remember that because of Jesus Christ, there is a resur resurrection, there is a purpose to life and beauty, and the meaning will go on forever. This Easter morning, because of him, everything is made right. Easter is a time to remember that three days after Jesus died, his followers discovered that his body was gone and his tomb was empty. An angel asked them. Luke 24, 5-6. Why seek ye the living among the dead? And then explain, he is not here, but is risen. Because of Jesus Christ, there is a resurrection. Because of him, life is not a dead end. Every tomb is temporary. We have a purpose that will not end, and the beauty and meaning of our lives will go on forever. Amen. Philippians 4, verse 7. This day, may you be filled with the hope in Christ, 
and find the peace of God, which passes all understanding. We celebrate Easter all because of him. to join us as we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And happy Easter. When you're lonely and your heart is filled with despair, remember God cares. God cares for you. I know when you're in doubt, you can find your way out. He will see you through. Yes, he will. You just call. despair. Remember God cares. God cares for you. I know when you are in doubt, you can find your way out. He will see you through. Yes, he will. You just call. Jesus, Jesus, 
Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I love the Lord. 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 Call him in the morning. Call him in the noon day. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Oh, how precious. Oh, how precious.
Let us all bow our, bow our heads as we go to God in prayer. Father God, it's one more time we're calling upon your rich and holy name. Lord, we just want to say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for this is the day that you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, thank you for waking us up on this morning and starting us on our way. Thank you, dear God, for giving us a mind to want to come into this house of praise and worship on today, just to lift up and magnify your holy name. Lord, if it had not been for you who was on our side, your word says, where would we be? Lord, we have so much to be thankful for on today. Lord, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, your name is worthy to be praised. Lord, today we come for no other reason but to lift up your name, to magnify your name for everything that you've done and everything that you're doing and everything, dear God, that we believe that you will do in the future. Lord, you've been a mighty good God. Lord, you've been a mighty good friend. Lord, you've been a mighty good comforter. Lord, you've been a mother to the motherless and a father to the fatherless and a brother and sister, dear God. You've been that and so much more. Lord, your word says that we can call you friend, Lord, because you care about our every need. Lord, we come here on today to celebrate the resurrection of your son, Jesus. Lord, it was on that day that, that he arose with all power and, and might and glory in his hand. Lord, signifying to God that he's still alive and yet well. Lord, we know that you're still in the healing business. Lord, we know that you're still in the saving business, dear God. We know that you're still able to do everything but fail. And so, Lord, we come to you bowed down, dear God, with many needs and many concerns. Lord, we ask that you would meet our needs right where we are in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, there are those that are on the prayer list on today that need you, dear God. Lord, I don't know every need, dear God, but you know yes, you all of the needs, dear God. Yes, you do, Lord. Lord, whether it be sick and shut in, Lord, whether it be for finances or employment, yes, Lord, whether it be for transportation, Lord, whether it be for shelter, God, whether it be for food or clothing, dear God, we Lord. ask that you would meet every need yes, in the name of Jesus. Yes. Lord, touch every name on the list yes, in the name of Jesus. Lord, there are some concerns and needs that their names are not on the list today on this morning. Yes, Lord. But Lord, we ask that you would meet those needs as well. Lord, we all have one thing in common, and that is we need you, dear God. Yes, Lord. Lord, we need you just yes, to make it through the day. Yes, Lord. Lord, we need you just to make it through the day. Lord, we need you just to make it through the day. Yes, Lord. Lord, sometimes we don't know which way is up from down. Lord, sometimes we don't know our left from our right. But Lord, we know that all we have to do is lift up our hands to the hills yes, from heaven, dear God. Lord, we can call upon your name. We can call upon your name, Lord, and you're able. Yes. And you're so merciful and so good. Lord, you care so much about us, dear God, that you will hear our faint and feeble voice. Lord, you will answer our cry by and by. Lord, you will meet our needs. Lord, you will send blessings down from heaven to care for us and watch over us and protect us, dear God. Lord, thank you for protecting us through the night. Lord, you didn't let the robber or the, or the murderer or the thief, dear God, come in and do any hurt, harm, or danger to our homes or to our families or to ourselves, dear God. Lord, we thank you so much for everything that you just keep on doing for us. Lord, if I had 10,000 tongues, it would never be enough for everything that you just keep on doing. Lord, thank you for keeping our minds. Thank you for keeping us in perfect peace. Lord, mental health is a serious issue that some struggle with, dear God. Lord, we ask that you would bless those that are dealing with those issues. Lord, bless that alcoholic that's strung out on alcohol. Lord, bless that drug addict that's, that, that's struggling with drugs. Lord, bless that that person that is just struggling with any type of addiction, dear God. We know that you're able to meet the need, Lord. We know that there are counselors and therapists and doctors, Lord, here on earth that we can go to to get help for these type of issues. Yes, 
So, Lord, we ask that you would bless and touch in Jesus' name. Now, Lord, we ask that you would forgive us for our many sins. Lord, we've sinned and come short of your goodness and your glory. So, Lord, that's why we're thankful for this resurrection day on today. Because, Lord, you arose with all power for the sake of all of our sins that we've committed. And, Lord, if we would just be humble and bow down and call upon your name and ask you to forgive us for our sins, confess our sins, and believe in our heart that you are God, Lord, we shall be saved. So, Lord, we thank you for forgiving us of sin. We ask that you would help us to do better and get it right. Lord, we would never be perfect. We would never live a sinless life on this side. But, Lord, we just thank you for your mercy and your grace. Lord, touch every person that's here under the sound of my feeble voice on today. Every person in this building, every man, every woman, every boy, every girl, Lord, touch in Jesus' name as only you can. Lord, bless the shepherd of this house, the angel of this house. Bless Pastor Thomas, dear God. Lord, we ask and pray that you would fill him afresh even now before he comes to stand behind this sacred desk to preach and proclaim your gospel. Lord, stand up in him even now in the name of Jesus. Lord, hide him behind thy cloth. Lord, sit him down and stand up in him that we may hear from heaven on today. Lord, bless his wife, dear God. Bless his son, dear God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, be a fence all around them by day and by night. Lord, bless everyone here and be a fence all around all of us in Jesus' name. Lord, we can't say thank you enough for everything that you've done. We pray and ask that you would help us to go higher in your name, to cast our cares at your feet, Lord, because we know that you care. Take us higher in your name, dear God, we pray, and we thank you, and we love you. Amen. said hallelujah today if you're grateful and glad to be in the house of worship today would you give your great God a hand clap of praise he's deserving of it all and we offer to him the highest praise richly and fully and freely it's just good to be in this house today amen 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 glory to God even now Grateful, grateful, grateful for this privileged moment to share the word of God. And I want to call your prayerful attention to the gospel of Matthew, that first book of the New Testament at chapter 28, the very familiar passage that lifts up the resurrection story. If you don't mind standing in honor of God's word, we stand here, Matthew 28, verses 1 through 10, from the New American Standard Bible translation, amen. When you have that passage of scripture, say, I have it. Yes. Amen. If you do not have your copy of God's word, the word of God is before us here on the monitors, and we thank God for that. We've got the New American Standard Bible translation before us. Here's how the word of the Lord reads. It says, now after the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to look at the grave. And behold, a severe earthquake had occurred, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled away the stone and sat upon it. And his appearance was like lightning and his clothing as white as snow. 
Verse number four says, the guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who has been crucified. He is not here, for he has risen, just as he said. Come see the place where he was lying. Go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And behold, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. Verse 8 says, And they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to report it to his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and greeted them. And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshiped him. Verse 10 concludes and it says, Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and take word to my brethren to leave for Galilee, and there they will see me. Amen. For the reading of God's word, you may be seated in the presence of our awesome and amazing God. We know that the grass withers and the flower thereof fadeth away, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Amen, amen, amen. With your prayerful participation and with the help of the Holy Spirit, I want to tag this text simply, Jesus won the victory. Jesus secured and won the victory for our benefit and for our blessing, and we celebrate him on today. On the darkest day that ever dawned, the Lord Jesus Christ was crucified. For more than 33 years, the Son of the God had walked the ways of the world, yet he had never been contaminated by its sin. He had gone about doing good, giving sight to the blind, speech to the dumb, hearing to the deaf, a new body to the cripple, and life to the dead. He had preached the world's greatest sermons and had practiced all that he preached. His life lit the world like the sun lights the earth. That life inspired men to rise up from the lowly depths and do great things for God. That life influenced men as no other life has ever influenced them. He was the perfect embodiment of all that is good and high and noble and useful and godly. But they crucified him thinking they could silence him forever. Everything he said and did rebuked the selfish leaders of his day. Yes, they crucified him, but here is something they didn't know. They were simply carrying out God's great eternal purpose. It was his purpose to give light and to give eternal life to the entire world by the only begotten son being used as an atonement for the sins of the entire world. God simply used this as an instrument in his divine and perfect plan. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is a vital part of the gospel message for a dead Christ can save no one. The empty tomb is proof that he is, in fact, the son of God that believers have a future inheritance and that we will once again meet Christians who have died, that our Christian ministry is not in vain and that Jesus Christ will one day judge lost sinners. The early church bore witness of the resurrection of Jesus Christ and so should we today. Brothers and sisters, you can't have a living faith if all you have is a dead savior. Without the resurrection, the Christian faith might be a commendable way of life, but Jesus would be just another great teacher who lived his life and returned to dust. Christianity would not be the truth from God if Jesus did not rise from the dead. The resurrection of Jesus is the historic act in which God raised Jesus' body from the dead three days after Christ's death on the cross. People of God, we must never, ever underestimate the importance of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The world believes that Jesus died, but the world does not believe that he arose from the dead. And I want to sonically submit to you six 
significant things the resurrection of Jesus proves. Number one, it proves that Jesus is God's son. Number two, it verifies the truth of scripture. Number three, it assures our own future resurrection. Number four, it is the proof of a future judgment. Number five, it gives power for Christian living. Number six, it assures our future inheritance and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, brothers and sisters, is paramount, it is central, and it is necessary for the child of God to embrace and apply to our spiritual walk of faith. With your prayerful consideration, I want to announce to you that in the first place, Jesus won the victory according to verses 1 through 4 in our text this morning, as his victory erases our fear factors. His victory erases and eradicates and totally does away with all of the fears that we will face in our lives. You do know that fear is false evidence appearing real. And you do know the opposite of fear is faith. Faith speaks to forsaking all, I trust him. And so God has called us to walk by faith, not fear, not flesh, not feelings. He's called us to walk by faith. And so I love it because the victory that Jesus secured on the cross of Calvary erases all of the fear factors. The text says Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb in fear and doubt. I want you to consider their high levels of concern. Will Jesus be there? Is he really dead? Was everything that he said while alive a big lie? Was he a phony? Did we hallucinate and conjure up this horrible scenario? Are we in a bad dream and all of this is just a figment of our imagination? Brothers and sisters, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary had real doubts. They had real questions and They had real fears. Verses 2 and 3 provide for us a vivid detail about the angel. An angel, of course, is a messenger of God. And this angel descends from heaven, and as he makes his mark on earth, a great earthquake begins to commence. This angel has a number of assignments, but the first of his noted tasks is to roll back the stone from the doorway of the entrance of the tomb. Now I want to point out something that many of us may not really consider, maybe you've overlooked it, but it's good to know that a striking and powerful point is the angel, according to the text, rolls away the stone, which suggests that Jesus didn't have to. He didn't have to roll away the stone because Jesus had already gotten up. And so this angel, this, ha- this angel helps us, and it's beautiful to understand that the reality is he rolls away the stone. The significance of the angel rolling away the stone was not for Jesus to come out because he had already come out. The importance of the angel rolling the stone away was not to permit Jesus to exit, but on the contrary, it was to allow everyone else to come in and see the empty tomb. I don't know if you appreciate that, but I really do. Because I love the fact that Jesus had already resurrected. The power of God had already touched him. He had already gotten up just like he said he would. Verse 3 provides a clear description of his appearance as his countenance was like lightning and his clothing was as white as snow. But here now, please notice the fear factor once again at verse number four. It shows us that the guards who were on task to guard the tomb to keep Jesus' disciples from stealing the body began to shake with fear as this angel appears and postures himself on top of the stone, sitting down, relaxing, and chilling. The Bible says the guards became like dead men. They were completely petrified and afraid of what they were seeing and experiencing. Church family, all of this simply says to us that as long as Jesus is with us and God's word declares that he'll never leave us or forsake us, as long as he is with us, the fifth factors of life that cause us to shake and quake are no longer valid. 
Paul advises his protege in the ministry, Timothy, who is the young pastor there in Ephesus in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. I love that because the fear factors of life don't have to cripple us and keep us bound, keep us in shackles, keep us in this chain place that God has released us from every fear that we'll ever face in our lives. Church, you need to know that through the power of Jesus' resurrection, fear no longer has dominion, power, or authority over our lives. We are free to walk in faith and not by sight, which is what messes us up and causes us to be afraid. Our faith is what it overpowers our fears through the power of Jesus' resurrection from the empty tomb. And because Jesus won the victory, this reality erases our fear factors. So in the words of Kirk Franklin, every child of God here today has the power to tell fear, farewell, goodbye, so long. You can tell fear, arrivederci. You can tell fear, sayonara. You can tell fear, adios. Since Jesus won the victory, our fears are erased. Maybe that doesn't help you. Maybe that doesn't bless you. But that sure enough blesses my whole life because there have been some Areas in my life where fear has tried to grip me and hold me down and keep me bound. But God has come to set the captives free and whom the son has set free, he's free indeed. And so no longer does fear bind us and constrict us and keep us down in a low place. We can walk up with our head held high to the sky, chest out, knowing that we are more than conquerors through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The fear factors are erased. Because Jesus won the victory. But secondly, according to verses 5 through 8, Jesus won the victory. Hear this. It expands our faith file. What I want to tell you right now is, in case you might not be aware, it may have slipped your mind, but the fact of the matter is, our God is a promise-keeping God. Do you believe that today? Do you know that for yourself, that our God is a promise-keeping God? He cannot lie. He cannot tell something fabricated. Everything that comes out of his mouth is true. Your Bible says he's not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Our Bible helps us to know that every promise of God is yes and amen through Christ Jesus. God keeps His word. Will somebody help me preach today? I look at a neighbor and say, neighbor, God keeps his word. Oh, yes, he does. He keeps his word. God is a promise keeper. Our God honors his commitments. He cannot lie. He cannot be unfaithful. St. John, it's my duty and privilege to let you know what, uh, that God is dependable. God is trustworthy. God is loyal. God is reliable. And you can trust in him. He always comes through. And I need to tell you that there's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. There is not a friend like the lowly Jesus. And what I like most about God is he's consistent. Everything about God is consistent. There's no up and down about him. Uh, One day he's this way, the next day he's another way. No, he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He is a consistent, faithful God. He's a promise-keeping God, and he will expand, increase, and boost your faith file. A faith file, brothers and sisters, is a folder that you keep in your heart that reminds you of the times God made a way. Anybody up in here besides me got a faith file? You got a history of God's hand moving in your life? You got a track record with God? You've seen God move mountains? You've seen God keep you in the valley and hide you from the rain? You've seen God perform miracle after miracle, breakthrough after breakthrough, time after time? He's always shown up right on time. He's not a God you can hurry. He'll be there. Don't you worry. You got to learn how to trust in him, not doubt, but believe and walk by faith and not by sight. 
I love this about our God, his character. I love this about our God, his integrity. I love this about our God, his faithfulness, because in his faithfulness, that means I can stand flat-footed on his word. In his faithfulness, that means that no, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Did y'all hear that? No weapon formed against us shall prosper. That doesn't mean that the weapon won't form, but it does mean that it won't prosper. That the enemy may have a weapon in his hand and have you in a bad place, but the reality is God will get you up and out of whatever you put yourself in because no weapon formed against you is going to prosper. The devil is a liar, and God will give you the victory if you learn how to hold on and trust in him. I love it because it's important that you keep your faith file organized so you won't forget what God has already done. Oh, listen to the text. The angel answered, said to the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen as he said. Come see the place where the Lord lay. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And indeed, he is going before you into Galilee, and there you will see him. Behold, I have told you. So they went out quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to bring his disciples' word. Did you catch that? They went out with fear. And that fear, the second one, is a fear of reverence. It's a fear of awe. It's a fear of holy awe, holy reverence to God. The first fear was a fear that I'm scared. I'm intimidated. I am afraid. But the second fear is a fear of reverence. They were able to do this because they encountered the true and living God. I wonder, have you ever encountered God in such a way to where you were fearful, but God gave you faith and you walked out full of faith and understanding that if God be for me, who can be against me? You walked out understanding that though he slay me, yet will I trust him. You walked out believing that the grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever. And as we stand on the word, we can walk out of here in faith knowing that God God is with us, though the storms rage, though the seas come up against us, and all the enemies form up against us, no enemy can topple the mind of God and the heart of God to the person of God that understands that the word of God has all power. And we just got to stand on his truth. I want you to zero in on the instruction that every believer should take heed to. Verse 6 says, come and see. Verse 7 says, go and tell. The angel tells the women to come and see that the tomb was empty and Jesus had risen just like he said because he is a promise keeper. And then the response to go and tell, verse 7, who are you going to tell? Everyone you come in contact with, brothers and sisters. Tell them at the gas station. Tell them at the grocery store. Tell them at discount tire. Tell them at Firestone. Tell him at work, tell him at play, tell everybody he is not dead. He has risen just like he said because God is seeking to expand our faith file. I love this about God. I love this about the, fake, the fact that God will take you from one place to the next if you hold fast to his promises. That he'll take you from glory to glory, from faith to faith. From grace to grace that 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 I love in John chapter 15, uh, Jesus teaches there and he talks about that. I am the vine dresser and my father is uh, that that vine. I'm the vine and my father is the vine dresser. And when you come unto God, that he will expand you as you trust him. And that seed is the word of God. And as you stand on the word of God, God will begin to increase you because God's word is firm footing. God's word is not a shame place it's a firm foundation so we got to learn how to embrace here it is finally our freedom fully because thoroughly and finally Matthew 28 verses 9 and 10 reveals that Jesus won the victory and this helps us to embrace our freedom fully 
the biblical text says, and as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them saying rejoice. So they came and held him by the feet and worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brethren to go to Galilee and there they will see me. I'm in my seat when I tell you that worship always precedes work. That in the mindset of the blood-washed, sanctified child of God that knows in their heart and mind they've been redeemed by the crucified blood of the Lamb, we know that true and authentic worship transforms our minds and allows us to work fully as we worship freely. Here's why I say that. Jesus in verse number nine meets the women on their way to tell the disciples the news that they just received from the angel. Jesus offers the ladies a greeting, a friendly salutation of rejoice. Hearing his greeting, they recognized him immediately and they fell at his feet and worshiped him. By his appearance, Jesus alleviated their fears and repeated the same message the angel had previously given. Here, they, uh, th their free and full worship of Jesus in verse 9, as they basked in the wonderful presence of Jesus, opened up the door for them to perform the assignment that both the angel and Jesus himself told them to do, and that was tell his disciples to meet him in Galilee. As I close, because I'm done, all I want you to get to see is after you worship God on the mountain peak, because worship is always an upward moment of celebration. It's always a going up experience when we worship our king of glory. We always come up. We always go up. We always receive newness of life. We always go down from this place better than when we came because worship is a going up experience. Worship gives us joy. Worship gives us peace. Worship gives us power. Worship gives us jubilee and excitement. Worship for the true worshiper is always sweet and satisfying. And as you give God your heart in true worship, he'll give you peace. He'll give you joy and he'll give you hope to know that trouble don't last always. That although times might be tight and tough in moments and in spots of life, God always gives us joy if we just hold on to his unchanging hand. Yeah. Then after you worship and go down from the high place, you can now go down into the valley on your job and smile because even though you might not like your present assignment, you might not like your present financial condition, God has a wonderful way of transforming your spirit and helping you to appreciate the small and in his timing, his timing, not yours, but in his timing, he will give you more. I wonder, is there anybody here today that wants more? Can I tell you, more will happen when you learn how to rest in God, when you learn how to trust in God, when you learn how to stand on his word. But not just more cars and clothes and cash and creature comforts. He'll give you more of his power. He'll give you more of his peace. I, I like what my cousin mentioned in Philippians chapter 4 verse 7 that God has the capacity to allow the peace of God that, 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 that passes all understanding. It will guard our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. I like that about our God, that God can give you peace right in the midst of enemies hating on you, right in the midst of enemies coming against you. But I'm grateful that God has a way of lifting us even in the midst of enemies. Can I tell you what the Bible says about that reality? The Bible says that the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still water. Waters. He restores my soul. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Surely God will prepare a table right there in the presence of your enemies. Anybody excited about that? 
that God has a way of giving you a table and you can rest in that table. You can feast at that table. While they looking at you with a mad, ugly face, you got peace all in your heart because God gives you joy right in the midst of your pain. God gives you peace right in the midst of your sorrow. He gives you bright hope and a wonderful tomorrow. Is there anybody here want to help me close this little message? Because God is the joy and the strength of my life. He removes all pain, misery, and strife. He promised to keep me, never to leave me, never, ever, ever come short of his word. We got to fast and pray. Stay in the narrow way. Keep our lives clean every day. I want to go with him when he comes back. Come too far. Seen too much. I've seen God change realities. I've seen, I've seen God transform negative spaces and places. And he gives us the joy of the Lord because the joy of the Lord is our strength. Anybody feel some strength coming in right now? You got power to make it through your darkest hour. Is there anybody here want to help me close today and celebrate a risen Savior? Yeah. Hallelujah. He's alive. He's not dead. He's not dead. He is alive. And we ought to celebrate him. Can you find you a neighbor? Look that neighbor in the face and say, neighbor, Jesus is alive. That's why you ought to shout and celebrate him right now. Don't wait till the battle is over. Shout right now. Praise right now. It will get better, but you got to go ahead and agree with the word of God that we don't serve a dead Jesus. We serve a risen Savior. How to reach the masses, men of every birth, for the answer to the key. Let's lift the Savior up and he will draw all men unto me. Is there anybody here want to lift him up? Lift him up today. When you lift him up, he will draw. We got to lift and he will draw. Your purpose in life is to lift his name up. And when you lift his name up, he'll do the drawing. Is there anybody here want to help me close this little message and give God glory today? Because you know that when the praises go up, the blessings will come down. Anybody need a blessing? Anybody Anybody need a breakthrough? Anybody need a way made? Open up your mouth today and give him glory. That problem that I had, I just couldn't seem to solve. I tried and I tried, but I just got deeper involved. But I gave it over to Jesus. I quit worrying about it. I gave it over to the Lord and he worked it out. That's why I can come to church, smile and celebrate, get excited because this and that I put it all in his hands. No matter how big, no matter how small, he's the master of it all. Can you just turn it over to him? Give it to him today. Quit worrying about it. Go to sleep at night. Pull the covers up close to your face and sleep a good sleep because God is about to turn it around. God is about to work it out. God is about to give you the oil of gladness for the spirit of heaviness won't he do it won't he do it won't he do it won't he won't he won't he do it won't he won't he won't he do it i'm grateful today that my jesus is king of kings he's lord of lords hallelujah right now do me one last favor and i promise i'm gonna leave you alone find your one final neighbor look that neighbor in the face and grab that neighbor by the hand and shake Shake their hand with some faith. Don't shake their hand with fear. Shake that hand with faith and say, neighbor, God is everything. What you need, God will supply. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it?
I'm grateful because I don't serve a dead Jesus. I don't serve a Jesus who has not been resurrected. Our Lord and Savior is alive. And he's in the world right now reconciling men, women, boys, and girls unto himself. And it is on that foundation that our brothers and our leaders are standing now. And this day has been held in honor of you, making a confession of faith. A confession of faith that says, Lord, I trust you and I believe in the word of God. I believe that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. If you believe that, and if you can confess that right now, you will go to heaven. You will be saved. If you have yet to make that confession, if you have yet to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, you need to make that confession today. And then as Christians, every growing Christian is a part of a local body. Amen. And so this church, St. John, is a local body. It's the church where you go to every Sunday to work out your salvation, according to scripture, with fear and trembling. So you ought to come and become a part of the church today. You can come right now. You can come right now because there's nothing better than knowing Jesus. There's nothing better than knowing Jesus. Than knowing Jesus. He will pick you up and turn you around. He will pick you up yes, and will. turn your life yes, he will. around. You ought to know him. You ought to know to know him get to know right him right now right now right now right now right now today just come there's nothing better there's nothing better than knowing jesus than knowing jesus sweeter 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 as the days go it by. gets sweeter as the long. days go final appeal to someone here today that is unsettled in the reality of who Jesus is. If you don't know Jesus as Savior and Lord, today is a great day to become in relationship with him, to connect with him. The Bible speaks of that term know in the place of intimacy. When you know someone according to scripture, you get intimate with them. To be intimate is to be connected in a deep and wonderful way. Intimacy, closeness, fellowship. God bless you, my sister. 
We're going to pray for these wonderful members in just a moment, but I'm making this appeal now to the unsaved and for those that have yet to accept Jesus Christ. Intimacy is a wonderful relationship. It speaks of knowing God in a wonderful way, but in a personal way. Paul says in Philippians chapter 4, I want to know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering, being conformed to his death. I, I implore you today, I urge you to get to know intimately Jesus Christ. The only way to God the Father is through Jesus Christ. As I was driving in just this morning, the Holy Spirit arrested me because I, I just keyed in on the signage outside that said one way. Many of you saw the same signage as you were driving this way. There are signs uh, on the streets of Houston that say one way. Yes, Brothers and sisters, the only way to heaven is through, God, is through Jesus Christ by way of accepting him yes, to sir. be connected to God the Father. Yes, sir. Buddha can't get you to heaven. Krishna can't get you to heaven. Muslim ph uh, philosophies can't get you to heaven. The only way to heaven is through Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. And so why don't you come today? Why don't you come right now? Receive Jesus today. Receive intimacy today. Right now, today, all you got to do is come. Just come. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Right now, today, just come. Come on, come on. invitation has been extended it is ours always to offer yours to accept or reject at this time we will hear from our leaders amen deacon williams amen to pastor thomas yes sir to st john family and friends we have three coming today amen. Uh, we have our own sister young coming yes i i presume she's coming for prayer We have the doctor. Would you Amen. stand, please? Amen. 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 He is also coming for prayer. Amen. 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 Next, we have Alicia, Asia. Would you stand, please? Mm -hmm. And you're coming. Prayer. Amen. She's Amen. coming for prayer as well. Yeah. Wonderful. I believe we have one more coming, Pastor. Okay. And we have. Krista Charter coming. Mm -hmm. She's coming for prayer also. Amen. 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 We thank God for these who have come by way of faith, and we're going to pray for each of them individually. How can we pray for you, Sister Young? Amen. We're going to pray for the success of your second eye surgery. God blessed you during the first one, and we know the same faithful God is going to bless you during the second operation. Amen. We're going to trust in faith on your behalf. Amen. My brother, my brother, how can we pray for you? Amen, amen. We are praying for our, our doctor, Dr. Mara here. We're praying for his success in the new assignment that God has given him. And we're trusting that God is going to give him more wisdom and more grace to be effective in the new assignment. Amen. We're going to pray in just a moment. Amen, amen, amen. Yes, yes, yes. My young sister, amen. How can we pray for you? Amen. We're praying for Asia. We're praying for her as God blesses her in, in a, a brand new endeavor. Amen. That God flourish you and bless you and honor your faith as you move in this new place. Amen. We're going to pray for you in just a moment. And my last sister, how can we pray for you? All right. And as well... Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord for increase. We're praying, and your name is Crystal, correct? Amen. We're praying for uh, Crystal in a great way. God has blessed her with a new position as well. So we're Amen. celebrating God for that. 
God is in the increase business. Amen. He's faithful like that. So we're going to pray right now. April is with her daughter, and we thank God for you. We're going to pray. I'm asking our sister leaders to come and surround these wonderful ladies, our deacon leaders, to come. Amen. Let's circle up, brothers and sisters. Let's do that. Amen. Amen. Get as close as you can. And we're going to pray in faith for these precious people. Let's believe God today, even now. Amen. Let's touch and agree if we can. Amen. Let's do that. Let's do it, y'all. And let us pray in faith even now. God, we thank you for this time of prayer. We don't come casually, but we come reverently, Lord. We come in full confidence, knowing that you are listening to us right now. So we lift up each of these concerns to you, God. We pray right now in a great way for each of these wonderful members, Lord, that you would hear their prayers, that you would touch them individually, that you would bless them, God, in great ways. We thank you for new assignments. We thank you for elevation. And we pray for wisdom in these new roles, God. We pray, God, right now that you would touch each of them, bless each of them, guide them, lead them, give them special grace to glorify you in all that they do. As you increase them and bless them, Lord, God, you get the glory, you get the credit, you get the honor, and give them the blessing, God. We thank you today, God, because we know that you are able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ever ask or think according to the power that's at work in us. So we trust you today, God. God, we've had to trust you on so many occasions. We've had to believe by faith on so many levels of life. And so today, right now, God, we're coming to you in the powerful name of Jesus asking you to move on their behalf, asking you to hear our cries, hear our petitions, and manifest your power in their lives. We thank you today because we believe in faith. It's already done. We believe, God, that you're already doing what we're asking you to do because, God, you've already gone into our tomorrow. You've already handled our next week and our next month. You've already gone into our next year, and you've already blessed. So we thank you right now. We give you glory on this Resurrection Sunday, and we say hallelujah. hallelujah. Because, God, we're giving it all to you in faith. Yes. And we trust you, and we thank you. And we count this prayer done in Jesus' name. Amen. And praise God. Praise God. It is done. It is done. It is done. I need you. You need me. We're all a part of God's body. Stand with me. Agree with me. You're all a part of God's body. It is His will. It is His will that every need be supplied. You are important to me. You are important to me. And I need you to survive. I need you to survive. You are important to me. I need you to survive. We got to do I pray for you, you pray for me. Hallelujah. I, I pray, pray for you, you pray for me. I love you, I need you to survive. I won't harm you with words from my mouth. I love you, I need you to survive. It is his will that every need be supplied. You are important to me. I need you to survive. You are important to me. You are important to me. I need you to survive. Hallelujah today. Amen. Amen. It's already done, y'all already done and we thank God for that we thank God for that well it's giving time and we celebrate our great God for this time to participate in this act of worship amen 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 we get excited because we know that God is in the blessing business and all he wants from us is our obedience that's all he desires and as we obediently stand on the word of God and trust him in faith he rewards us and blesses us and increases us amen you can give in a number of ways you can text by way of giving. You can text the word GIVE, G-I-V-E, to the phone number 210-529-8631. You can give by way of text right now by 
uh, texting that word, GIVE, G-I-V-E, to the phone number, 210-529-8631. You can also go to our church website, which is stjohnmbconegray.org, and on the home page, you'll see the term GIVE on that left-hand side. Click on that term, and you can give to us in those digital ways. You can also mail in your gifts, of course. Our physical address here is 2222 Gray Street, Houston, Texas, 77003. And at this time, we're giving in person, and many of you have your tangible physical gifts, as I do, and we give by way of worship. We give as an act of worship, and we know that God blesses the cheerful giver. Amen. Let us pray. God, we thank you for this time to participate in this moment of giving. We pray, God, that you bless every hand that has something to give. We pray, God, that you continue to challenge us and convict us and help us to give and to trust you and to, God, present to you in worship our gifts. We know, God, that you've given us 100%. And we pray, God, that you'd help us to be wise and faithful stewards, managers over what you've given unto us. We know, God, that we can't beat you giving no matter how hard we try. So we trust you in faith with the tithe, the tenth. We trust you in faith with our offerings. We trust you in faith with our stewardship and our seed gifts. And we pray, God, that you would multiply them. And we pray, God, that you would help us to give a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. We bless you today because you are the faithful God. And we thank you for this time of giving. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And God bless you as you give. God bless you today. He is the King of Kings. Oh. Let us pray and be thankful. Father, we thank you for these gifts. We pray, God, that you would bless them and multiply them and add them, God, to uh, the work of the kingdom that you're producing here at the St. John Church. Help us to continue to move further as we trust you in faith and take us to higher heights, further steps and deeper depths by our faith in you, Lord. We thank you today, God. We know that all of our help comes from you. All of our resources come from you. And we thank you, God, for helping us to be wise managers of the manifold gifts and grace that you've given unto us. God, give us grace even now as we close this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen. amen. Let us stand now for our doxology. Praise God. Praise God from whom all 
This time we have our announcements, and we'll hear from Sister Columbus. Amen. 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 People of God say amen. amen. Amen, amen. Thank you so much, Sister Columbus, for keeping us abreast of the latest happenings here at our church. And what a great day this has been and is. And we just celebrate God so much for his faithfulness. I want to acknowledge the presence of this awesome family, my family, amen. Brother Marty and his beautiful family are here with us in worship. Just want to acknowledge you, man. Good to have you. Good to see you. Amen. Brother Howard Martin, amen, and family. Good to have y'all with us. All of my family are here too. Amen. I see so many of you. Amen. Miss you, Alicia. Good to see you. Good to have you back with us. And just each of you, I love you all so much. Y'all look fantastic. Brian is here. Amen. Off the road. Amen. Praise God Amen. for you. And so many of you here today, the Chapman family, I see y'all. Love y'all so much. Amen. God is so great. Brother Hearn? Of course, my our aunt. Uh, one of the matriarchs of our family is here represented, and she had a birthday. Was that Saturday? Was it just yesterday? It was some April 20th. Amen. But the celebration happened uh, just yesterday, I believe, or Friday. Friday it was. So it's good to have you. We love you so much. Thank you for being so awesome. Amen. 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 We honor God today. It's good to see each of you wonderful people here. Amen. 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 God be praised. We've got our Easter aunt. Easter egg hunt and it is happening amen in just a moment downstairs in our little auditorium as already announced and so that should be so great for our young people and we thank God for that I want to acknowledge our mission choir blessing us today can we thank God for them amen 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 and I think I've covered everything for now 
We look to the Lord in the benediction. Let us stand now. Let us stand. Let the church, let the church, let the church say amen. amen. We bless your name, God. We thank you so much. You have been faithful. So let the church say amen. I just want to pray for your up and coming week. So every head bowed, every eye closed. Let me speak blessings over your life even now. Now unto him who is yet able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think according to the power that's at work in us. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and give you peace. And may that peace that surpasses all understanding guard your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. How we honor you today, God, and how we thank you for your son Jesus being born and ultimately dying on the cross of Calvary for the remission of our sins. We don't serve a dead Jesus. We serve a risen Savior, and we thank you, Jesus, for the victory. Bless us now as we leave this place, but never from your presence. In Jesus' name we say hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. Have a great week. I love you, St. John. God bless you. God bless you.